Hi and welcome to this Leaving Cert Higher Level video on coordinate geometry of the circle. Uh, this video is going to deal with the equation um, of a circle and how to work with that. Now, just to let you know, this video is quite long. There is a large number of examples throughout. Um, because we're looking at all the different ways where we can find the equation of the circle, um, I've listed all the different examples we have here, so it'll give you an idea where to skip to if there's one specific one that you like. Uh, so in this video, we're going to look at examples of how to find the equation of a circle with center 0, 0, find the equation of the circle, sorry, the equation of a circle with center HK. To find the center and the radius of a circle given the equation, uh, the location of a point relative to the circle, uh, equation of a circle given its center and the equation of a tangent, the equation of a circle given three points on the circle, equation of a circle given a point on the circle and the equation of the tangent at a point, the equation of a circle through two given points and its center on a given line, equation of a circle given its center and the length of the chord, it makes it one of the axes, and finally, the equation of two possible circles through two given points which touch one of the axes. So, like I said, huge number of examples here, all dealing with different ways where we can get the equation of the circle. So, like if you look at this, um, they could be asking this a different one each year and they wouldn't have repeated themselves. So, like we do see a lot of variation when it comes to the circle question. Some things are there and there's a lot of repetition with it, but we are seeing more and more variety. So if you want to get to a specific um, to a specific example, these examples are listed in order. So the bottom ones are near the end and so on. So before we start, I just want to bring your attention to page 18 and page 19 in your log tables. Although the page 18 and the top of page 19 are all line formula, these formula come up quite a lot when we're dealing with circle questions. And um, this is because a lot of what we do with this circle is linked into what we already know about the line. Page 19 at the bottom half has the circle formulas. So there are two sets of circle formulas. Here we have given center hk and radius or the equation of the circle is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals or squared so i'll just highlight where i'm reading so we're looking at this one here so that equation formula is the one we tend to use when we're building the equation and i say tend to because it's not um a hundred percent rule but we usually use that one if we're building the equation it does depends it does depend on what information we have then the next one says given the equation so this these kind of three pieces underneath are two if you're not using the tangent formula tend to be the ones that we use when we have the equation of the of the circle and we want to work with it to pull out the center to pull out the radius so those are covered those kind of examples are covered in another video i'll link um the other two circle videos in the description if you want to look back on how to build the equation of the circle and how to work with it and how to work with the tangents as well so look at this circle here we have a lot going on we have some things that we know and some things that you should know are the diameter which is a line that goes from one end of the circle to the other but it goes through the center we also have the radius which is half the diameter or it goes from the center of the circle out to the edge of the circle one of the ones we've talked about in the last few days has been a chord so a chord is a line that cuts the circle and remember that the diameter is actually a special chord that goes through the center we then have an arc and this is something you probably came across when you were doing your constructions at junior cert so arc is like a part of the outside of the circle so it's part of um the circumference we then have tangent here so our tangent a b it touches the circle only once and the last thing that's in this diagram is segment which is up here, which is a piece of the circle. And it's a very specific piece of the circle. Look at the way that it's cut. We also have a sector. So a sector of the circle, which we'll look at in a lot more detail um, when we're doing our trigonometry. And that will be the sector. So our sector would look like a slice of pizza. The segment is what is cut off using a cord.
So now we're going to go through some of the circle theorems. You don't need to write these out um, if you're watching this um, instead of being in class. There is actually a little printout that's about half an A4 page for you to stick in. So at this point you should have had your keywords, you should have had that circle diagram that we had on the last slide and then this circle theorem sheet will be stuck in. So if you're taking down notes, leave a space. So there are two main theorems in a corollary. So the first theorem is theorem 20, which is about tangent, tangents. And it says each tangent is perpendicular to the radius that goes to the point of contact. So that's saying a tangent and a radius are perpendicular when at the same point. And you can clearly see it over here on the right. It then has uh, the second part of the theorem, which states if P lies on the circle S, and the line L is perpendicular to the radius at P, then L must be a tangent. Okay, so we can work this both ways. If I know it's a tangent, I know it's perpendicular. If I know it's perpendicular and touches the circle, it must be a tangent. So the corollary of that theorem, theorem 20, is if two circles intersect at one point only, then the two centers and the point of contact are collinear. So we would have looked at collinear quite recently when we did the area of a triangle. Remember, collinear means lie on the same line. So here's my point of contact. There's my center one. There's my center two. Similarly here, point, a center of the big circle, center of the small circle, center of con or sorry, the point of contact. So we talk about these circles as touching externally. So if you look at the diagram, hopefully that makes sense why that's called externally because they're touching outside and then this one is called touching internally and we'll do a lot more with this and actually that's the basis for quite a lot of our exam questions so this idea that the circles touch externally and internally and we'll do a little bit more about that when we come to that section the last theorem is theorem 21, and this is also a really, really important little theorem that comes up in quite a number of uh, circle questions, and we utilize it. And it basically says the perpendicular from the center of a circle to a chord bisects the chord. So remember that bisects means to cut in two equal pieces. And you can see here that they've done our double lines to show that the perpendicular from the center so here's my center point and the line comes through the chord and it is perpendicular it will bisect the chord and then the second part is this the perpendicular bisector of a chord must pass through the center of the circle so if I know that line cuts the chord then I also know that line must go through the center and if it continues to the other side of the circle it will be a diameter so that is ready to be stuck into your copies. The equation of a circle that has center zero, zero. Um, and it's telling us that the circle has center zero, zero, and it passed through the point three, one. Find the length of the radius of the circle. So the first part, what we have is a circle. We've been given the center zero, zero, and we've also been given another point on the circle. So what we can say is the distance between those two points will give us our radius. So 0, 0 and 3 minus 1. So we have x1, y1, x2, y2. And our distance formula or length formula, which is given on page 18. So it's x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 uh, minus y1 squared, square root of 9 plus 1, which is the square root of 10, and that is my radius. And the next thing they've asked us is let's get the equation of the circle. So because I have the center and a radius, I go to my formula on page 19 and the one that creates the equation, and that is given the center hk, we have x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. So we have, first of all, let's set up our hk. So we have 0, 0, which is hk, and we have root 10, which is the radius. So yes, 
x minus 0 squared plus y minus 0 squared equals root 10 squared. Clean that up, we get x squared plus y squared equals 10. Now it is a good idea to be able to recognize that when we just get x squared plus y squared equals some number, that will always give us a circle with center 0, 0. If we have an x and a y, so of power 1 or degree 1, we will be able to talk about um, circles that have a center that is not 0, 0. So being able to recognize that can be very, very useful as we move on in the questions. So example two, let's find the center and the radius of a circle uh, given the equation. So this is given in the form of the first formula on page 19. So that is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. So what we get is minus h equals minus 3, so h equals 3. Here we get minus k equals 4, so k equals minus 4. And r squared equals 36. Now, we should do plus and minus 6. However, because we know that um, radius is a length and length can only be positive, it's just going to be 6. So the center, C -N -T -R -E, the center is going to be 3 minus 4, and the radius is equal to 6. So now let's make the equation of a circle with center hk. So now without 0, 0, we're going to label this hk, and that's or. Our formula is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals or squared. So I have x minus 3 squared, y plus 1 squared, equals 4 squared. So we can leave it like that, but it'd be good practice to multiply it out. So x squared minus 6x plus 9 plus y squared plus 2y plus 1 equals 16. So cleaning that up, x squared plus y squared minus 6x plus 2y plus 10 minus 16 minus 6 equals 0. So that's the equation of our circle. So it depends on the question. If the question gives you circles that are in the form like this, then leave it like that. But if they give you um, equations and they're in that form, then we could practice to give it back to them in that form. And um, if they want it in a specific um, format, they will specify that. So now I'm going to use this general equation formula and we're going to work backwards. So the general equation formula is given at the bottom of page 19 and it is given as x squared plus y squared plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c equals 0. So we can work out 2g equals minus 2 so g equals minus 1. Here we get 2f equals 4 so f equals 2 and c equals minus 8. So we can pull out that information very quickly. Um, I would advise if you're like, if this is the question, to show as much workings as you can to show this. I know it's very easy to write it down. And um, if you're in the middle of a question and you need the center of the radius, maybe writing it down is fine. But just even to start off, make sure you're really clear where all this information is coming from. Make sure it's really clear to somebody correcting your work. So it gives us in the log tables up on page 19 that the center is minus G minus F. So that's my center. And I know my g is minus 1, so minus g is 1. And my f is 2, so minus f is minus 2. And my radius is the square root of g squared plus f squared minus c. Be so careful with this because um, although it doesn't matter with the g and the f because we're squaring them anyway, when you subtract and you have a negative, it will become positive. So if you're getting an error underneath that square root, just double check, um, just double check really quickly, have you got your signs correct on the C? So we get one plus four plus eight. So that's the square root of 13, and that's my radius.
Okay, so example five, we're looking at the location of a point relative to the circle. Now, there's going to be two different methods to do this. So I'm going to show you the first method first. Uh, this is the more um, logical method. And it's probably the one that the majority of students would think of if you were asked to do this question in an exam. So investigate if that point is inside the circle. And before we kind of do that, I suppose it's important to understand the three different scenarios. So here are the three scenarios we can have. Like a point could be on the circle, a point could be inside the circle, or a point could be outside the circle. Now, once it's drawn like this, hopefully you kind of start to see straight away, oh, the logic that can be used. So I suppose sketching is such an important piece um, in many of these circle questions because having a sketch in front of us helps us to see the logic very, very quickly. So if you're not given a picture, a sketch of some description is always a good place to start. So we're trying to investigate if it's inside the circle. So we're trying to deal with this scenario here. But we're going to look at all three of them here because this example can be put for inside, outside or on the circle. So here we're talking about if the point is on the circle, then the distance between the centre and that point would actually be the same length as the radius. If that point is inside the circle, the distance between the centre and that point would be smaller than the radius. And if the point is outside the circle, the distance between the centre and the point will be bigger than the radius. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our equation and we're going to go to page 19 and get the general formula for a circle. So x squared plus y squared plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c. And we're going to figure out the centre and the radius. So to do that, we need our g and our f. So we have 2g equals minus 6. So g equals minus 3. 2f equals 4. So f equals 2 and we get c equals 4. So working out now we have the center is minus g minus f so for us that's 3 minus 2 and the radius we have a little formula for that as well it's the square root of g squared plus f squared minus c which is <clears throat> excuse me g squared minus 3 squared as f squared, 2 squared, minus 4. So that's 9 plus 4 minus 4, square root of 9, which is 3. So now we've worked out the centre and the radius. We're going to take um, the centre, which we'll call O, 3 minus 2, and we're going to find the distance to P, this point that we're investigating, which is 4, 1. And we're going to find the distance between them. So x1, y1, x2, y2. And our formula is on page 18 of the log table. So it's square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So what that looks like for us is 1, and that's 1 plus 2 is 3 plus 9, and that's going to give us the square root of 10. So we know the distance from OP is the square root of 10, and comparing that to the radius, which is 3, that's actually bigger. So the distance to P is bigger. So it's not inside the circle. Instead, what we have is that point is outside the circle. So therefore, P is not inside the circle. It's actually outside. So actually, it's outside the circle. So let's look at a second method where we can locate or find the location of a point relative to a circle. So we've got this point which is 4, 1 and we have the equation of the circle which is x squared plus y squared minus 6x 
plus 4y plus 4 equals 0. Now, the three scenarios are it's either inside the circle, on the circle, or outside the circle. Now, on the circle is quite a simple one because that's the one that we will probably well, we should be most aware of because if a point is on a circle or if a point is on a line or if a point is on a function, we should be able to sub in to the equation and the equation should be balanced. So what we're going to do here, let me get rid of these ones, we're actually going to sub in the point and see what happens. So we're going to do 4 squared plus 1 squared minus 6 times 4 plus 4 times 1 plus 4 equals 0. So that's 16 plus 1 minus 24 plus 4 plus 4 equals 0. So we get 1 equals 0. Now that is truly, that is that is definitely false, definitely. 1 does not equal 0. If we got 0 equals 0, we know the point will be on the circle. So what we figured out now is actually that point is not on the circle and you're saying well that's great but that doesn't tell us whether it's inside or outside but actually the answer we get does tell us because when we sub it in if the answer equals zero and um, we know that the point is on the circle okay so that's how, if we get it equal to zero because these general formulas it will be equal to zero if we find out with the general formula that it's less than zero, what we're actually discovering is the point is inside the circle. And finally, if it is greater than zero, like our scenario here, it's telling us point is outside the circle. Now, so from here, we would then say, therefore, point is outside the circle, therefore not inside. And um, the reason that this works so well, and I'll just, this is like our little piece you need to remember. It's because when you look or when initially we got the equation of a circle, what we actually did was we literally found if the distance between the center and some other point was the length of the radius, we were able to use that to get the equation of the circle. So effectively, the equation of the circle includes the distance formula, or it's derived from the distance formula. So using it to figure out where a point lies is actually very, very easy. Now, although this method is a little bit quicker and a lot less work, it does require you to remember a lot more. So some students prefer this, some students prefer method one. Both methods absolutely valid and give us exactly the same answer. Let's talk about the equation of a circle given its centre and the equation to the tangent. So now we're getting into the equations that maybe aren't as straightforward and require a little bit more thinking. So the line 2x plus 3y minus 13 equals 0 is a tangent to the circle with centre 0, 0. Find the radius of this circle. So the first thing I would suggest you do in all of these questions is if they don't give you a diagram to sketch something out. So without thinking too deeply about where the line is or anything like that, we can literally draw a circle with a tangent and that's what we have. So our tangent here is 2x plus 3y minus 13 equals 0. And we know from our theorems that the tangent to the circle is perpendicular to the radius at the same point. So there's our radius at the same point. Um, the radius means that it is going through the center point. In this case, that is 0, 0. And that means this is meeting at a right angle. So all of these things are really important to work with. Um, once you have them on a diagram, sometimes something clicks with you that maybe wouldn't click just reading the question. That's why it's so important to do a sketch of some description. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be accurate. You just want to get the sense of the circle and how it interacts with this tangent. So now we have the center 0, 0 and we have this line here. So let's break it down. What they want us to find is the equation. 
Okay, so that's what the question is actually asking us for. We want the equation of a circle. Now, in order to get the equation of the circle, you require two things. You require the center, which is fine because we actually have that. So I'm going to tick that off. And we need the length of the radius. Now, we don't have that. But if I had that, then I would be able to get the equation of the circle. So let's take a look at our diagram. How could I use this diagram to get the radius of the circle? So the answer is the top of page 19 gives us a distance formula, which is the perpendicular distance formula between a point and a line. And we now have a point and a line and the distance between them is the radius. So let's work with that. So we're going to take the point 0, 0 and we're going to take the line 2x plus 3y minus 13 equals 0 and we're going to label it. So this is x1, y1. This is ax plus by plus c equals 0. Our formula is the absolute value of ax1 plus by1 plus c all over the square root of a squared plus b squared and we want to work that out. So that gives us the absolute value of negative 13. Oh, sorry, I put in a squared plus b squared. I should have filled in my numbers as I was going. So it's t squared plus 3 squared. So that's all over the square root of 4 plus 9, which is 13. Get rid of the absolute value signs. The absolute value signs are modulus signs, meaning that whatever is inside must be taken as positive. So we get 13 over root 13. And you can either simplify that by putting it into your calculator or rationalizing the denominator by multiplying the top by root 13 and the bottom by root 13. So the bottom, so the top comes 13 root 13, 13 times, root, sorry, root 13 by root 13 is 13. And then they cancel and I'm left with root 13. So you don't have to do it that long way. Um, you can put it into the calculation, it will simplify, but we should know how to rationalize the denominator of a fraction. So that has given me the radius. So now I have the two things I need to get the equation. So we're going to go to the formula. So I need a center, which is 0, 0, and I need my radius, which is root 13. For our formula, this is hk, and this is r, and it is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared and that's x squared plus y squared equals 13. So really important that you have that logic and work through what do I want, how do I get it and then working with your little sketch to help you figure out the best way to approach it. So now let's look at the equation of a circle given three points on the circle. So there are a few different ways that we can do this, uh, but I think the easiest by far, and the only method I'm gonna go through here, is using the logic that if I know a point is on the circle, I can sub it into the equation and it will work. You might say, but well, we don't have the equation. Well, let's get the general equation. So the equation we're gonna use for these are x squared plus y squared plus 2gx plus 2fy, plus c equals zero. So I know that if I sub in any one of those points, they will all work in that equation because they says the equation of the circle, which contains the points. So those points are included. So let's deal with a. So when I sub in a, I get two squared plus one squared plus two g two plus 2f1 plus c equals 0. Cleaning that up, I get 4 plus 1 is 5. So I get 4g plus 2f plus c equals uh, 2 squared plus 1 squared gave me 5. I'm going to bring it across to clean it up, minus 5. And that becomes equation 1. Notice I have an equation with three unknowns. That means I'm going to need at least three equations to figure it out. So let's sub in point B. So we get 0 squared plus 5 squared plus 2G times 0 plus 2F times 5 plus C equals 0. Now this will clean up a little bit nicer because you get 10F plus 
plus c equals negative 25. So because of that zero, we get this lovely kind of simplification. There's only f's and c's here. And then c, we get minus one squared plus two squared plus two g x plus two f y plus c equals zero. Cleaning that up, minus two g plus four f plus c, we get one squared is one, two squared, that's five. So negative five over here, and that's equation three. So now we have three equations, and we're going to do simultaneous equations to figure out what the three variable, well, the three unknowns are, my g, my f, and my c, and then we can go back to the equation and sub them in. So what we need to look at are the three equations and understand the best way to approach it. Since equation two has already got no g, so it literally has only got its f and its c, the best thing we can do is to take one and three and eliminate the g. And that will take away a full step for us because usually we take two equations and we eliminate a variable. We then take two other equations and eliminate the same variable. But this one we won't need to do that because we can go straight to equation two. So let's start into that. So let's start into that. So I'm gonna take one and I'm gonna take three, four G plus two F plus C equals minus five. And I'm going to take 3, which is minus 2g plus 4f plus c equals minus 5. And just to keep track of it, we're going to eliminate our g. So to do that, I'm going to multiply the bottom line by 2. And I get 4g plus 2f plus c equals negative 5. That doesn't change. I get minus 4g plus 8f plus 2c equals negative 10. It eliminates, I get 10f plus 3c equals minus 15, and that becomes equation 4. I'll change back to my other colours. So this becomes equation 4. And now we would usually do like two and three and get rid of the same letter, but we don't need to because two is already missing G. So what we'll do is we'll take two and we'll take four and we can eliminate anything we want then because once we eliminate one letter, we'll be down to one letter and we'll be able to figure out the value. So 10F plus 3C equals minus 15. Best thing to do is to eliminate Fs. Once I decide what I'm doing, I put it on top. And um, that keeps it easy for me to go back to check if I need to, if something goes wrong. But it also means that somebody correcting my work has a much better idea of what I'm doing. So these eliminate. And I have minus 2c is equal to minus 10. So c equals 5. Okay, so that's our first letter. Uh, we can go back to probably 4 I'll use and we do 10f plus 3 times 5 equals minus 15. So 10f plus 15 equals minus 15. So 10f equals minus 30. So f equals minus 3. And then the final one, go back to 1 or 3. Can't use 2 this time because I'm looking for a g. And I get 4g plus 2f plus c equals, sorry, I should actually fill in, minus 5, I'll fill them in now, 4g plus 2 times minus 3 plus 5 equals minus 5. So cleaning this up, we get 4g minus 6 plus 5 is minus 1, bring it across plus 1 equals minus 4. So g equals minus 1. So there are three letters, and now we just need to put them back into the equation of the circle. 
So going back to our general equation now, we sub in what we find out. So x squared plus y squared plus 2 instead of g, we're putting in minus 1x plus 2f is minus 3y plus c, which is 5, equals 0. So we get x squared plus y squared minus 2x minus 6y plus 5 equals 0 and that's the equation of the circle. Now there are other methods like I said but I think this is probably the most straightforward. It'll work every time. It is leaning on something that we have to do anyway. We need to be able to work with um, simultaneous equations that have three unknowns. So it's a really good um, logical method that most students are very comfortable with. Just make sure that you're okay with that general equation and the subbing in because the points are on the circle we can sub them into the equation and they will work that's a very very important little piece of logic that we use in a lot of different places so equation eight so let's look at the equation of a circle given a point on the circle and the equation of the tangent at the point so find the equation of the circle which touches this line at that point and which passes through the point B. Now, what we've actually been able to figure out here um, is there's two points that are on the circle because the equation of the circle which touches that line at that point. So that point has been given to us and another point. Now, so we've been given two points on the circle. As we saw in the previous example, we need three points on the circle in order to do simultaneous equations because there is an F, a G and a C. So there is three different letters. So we'll need three different pieces of information. So what we actually have here is two pieces of information and we need to figure out a third piece of information to let us move forward. So first thing we're gonna to do to give us a bit of help is to sketch something out. So let's do that. So the sketch is going to look something like this. Um, we have our point A, which we know sits here, which is 5, 3. We have our center point here, which we're going to call minus G, minus F. And we have another point, let's say it's here, B minus 2, 4. So we don't know exactly where the points are, but like I said, this is just a sketch. And this is 3X minus 4Y minus 3 equals 0. So we're trying to find the equation. And if we go back to basics, to get the equation, we need two things. We need our center and we need the length of the radius. So what we can do in this case is join A and B here, which creates a chord. And another of our theorems states that if we draw a radius through a chord, um, it will perpendicularly bisect it. So that means cut it in half. So that means that, I'll just clean up this little symbol here. It's meant to be a right angle. So this point here is the midpoint of AB. So if we talk about this red line that I've just drawn, and we have a green line that, that indicates the radius, if we could get the equations of both of those lines, which we can, and we then say that we want to find the point where they intersect using simultaneous equations, then we'll be able to get that center point. Once we have the center point, we can figure out the radius quite easily. So I'm going to just for ease number this number one, because that's the first one we want to work out. And I'm going to number this number two. So they're the two we're going to work with. So let's start with one. So that green line, um, because it is um, a radius that meets the tangent at that point, it is perpendicular to the tangent, which is 3x minus 4y minus 3. So let's start with that. So it's perpendicular. So first thing I'm going to figure out is, well, what is its slope? So we're getting it in the form y equals mx plus c. 3 and y equals 4 over 3 x sorry I've got done that backwards 3 over 4 plus minus 3 over 4 so that means our slope is 3 over 4 
Therefore, our perpendicular slope, using the opposite reciprocal, so we change the sign and we flip the fraction, is 4 over 3. So now we have a slope that is minus 4 over 3, and we have the point A, which is 5, 3, and we can make the equation of the line. So y minus y1 is equal to m bracket x minus x1, y minus 3 minus 4 over 3 x minus 5. 3y minus 9 minus 4x plus 20 and we want to rearrange that so we have 4x plus 3y minus 29 equals 0 and that is equation 1. So that is our green line up there. So let's work through now for equation 2. So now let's work equation 2. So equation 2 is perpendicular to AB. So I want the slope of AB, which is, so A, we'll just write them here, 5, 3. B is minus 2, 4. So um, x1, y1, x2, y2. So it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So that's 1 over negative 7, so minus 1, 7. Therefore, perpendicular slope is 7. So now what we're going to do is we're going to have to find the midpoint so we can do the equation. So the midpoint of AB, so the midpoint is x1 plus x2 over 2, and y1 plus y2 over 2, and that gives us 3 over 2 and 7 over 2. So the equation is going to be where m is equal to 7, and our point is 3 over 2 and 7 over 2. y minus y1 is equal to m bracket x, minus x1. Um, if you want to at this point multiply across by 2, it might help. 2y minus 7 equals 14x minus 21. So we have in the form that we've been working 14x minus 2y minus 21 plus 7 minus 14 equals zero. So that gives us our second equation. And if we want we can simplify that down. So that gives us 7x minus y minus 7 equals zero and that's equation two. So now we're going to do simultaneous equations with one and two to find our, our center of the circle. So we're going to work straight from here. Best thing to do is multiply the bottom one by um, 3. 4x plus 3y minus 29 equals 0. 21x minus 3y minus 21 equals 0. Is eliminate. So we get 25x minus 50 equals 0. So uh, 25x equals 50. So x equals 2. So bring that back in. We'll go to 4 times 2 plus 3y minus 29 equals 0. So 8 minus 29 minus 21. So 3y equals 21. So y is equal to 7. So the mid or the center of our circle is 2 7. So that's one thing that we needed. The second thing that we needed was the length of the radius. So in order to work out the radius, we have to use this center, which we now know is 2, 7, with any of our other points, so A or B. So we can go 2, 7 to A, which is 5, 3, and the distance formula. So x1, y1, x2, y2. We have the square root of 
x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared, which is square root of 3 squared, which is 9, and minus 4 squared plus 16, which is 25. So the length of the radius is 5. So now that's all that is left to do is to put together, I'm going to highlight these so we can see them, the radius and our center point and build the equation. So just to go back, to get the equation, we need the center, which we know is 2, 7. And the length of the radius is 5. So we go to our formula on page 19. And it's the HK formula. So HK and that's or. Um, make that look more like an or. So it's x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. That's x minus 2 squared plus y minus 7 squared equals 5 squared. So we are going to multiply this out. x squared minus 4x plus 4 plus y squared minus 14y plus 49 equals 25. x squared plus y squared minus 4x minus 14y. Um, 4 and 49, so we're at 53 minus 25, so equal, so that's 28, plus 28 equals 0, and that's our final answer. So quite a lot of steps to this, um, and remembering that piece about the chord was key to this question. So example 9, uh, finding the equation of a circle through two given points and its centre on a given line. So find the equation of this circle whose centre is on this line here and which passes through these two points A and B. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is sketch it out, um, just like every other question, just for us to get a sense of what's going on. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to label this as line L and there are two points don't really know where they are. Um, let's say that's B and that's A, that's 1, 1 and 2 minus 1. Remember, this is just a sketch. I'm not even thinking about where the point should go. Um, we're literally just sticking them somewhere on the circle. So um, when we're dealing with questions like this, we need to figure out, well, how can I use the information that I have? We have a centre point here and our centre is minus G minus f so i know that if i substitute a and b into my general formula and the general formula from page 19 is x squared plus y squared plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c equals zero um if i sub in a and i sub in b i'll get sorry i forgot my plus c plus c equals zero. If I sub in a and if I sub in b, I'll be able to get two equations which give me g, f and c. So I will need a third equation and that third equation can come from using the center point and the equation of the line because I know that that center point sits on that line. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use point a. So subbing in a, I get one squared plus one squared plus 2g1 plus 2f1 plus c equals 0 and we get 2g plus 2f plus c equals minus 2 and that becomes equation 1. Subbing in b into the equation of the circle because it sits in the circle we get 2 squared plus minus 1 squared plus 2g2 plus 2f minus 1 plus c equals 0 and we get 4g minus 2f plus c equals minus 5 and that's equation 2 and then the third equation is the fact that minus g minus f sits on the line L. So 3x minus y minus 7 equals 0. So that's 3 times minus g 
minus minus f minus 7 equals 0. So minus 3g plus f minus 7 equals 0. And that becomes equation 3. So we have three, three variable uh, simultaneous equations. The third equation here doesn't have a C. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to work with equation 1 and 2. We're going to eliminate our C and then create a new equation, equation 4, and work with equation 4 and equation 3. So let's do that. So although it will be tempting um, to cancel out the f's, remember we want to work all three equations together. So actually it will be much, much easier for us to work with the fact that c is already being eliminated. So we're going to eliminate c from equation 1 and 2. So I'm going to change the signs on 1, minus 2g, minus 2f, minus c equals 2. Get 4g minus 2f plus c minus 5. C is eliminate here. Get 2g minus 4f equals minus 3. And this becomes equation 4. Now we can take equation 3 and equation 4 and we can work with them. So equation 3 is minus 3g plus f. We'll bring that 7 across so it lines up the same way. We get 2g minus 4f equals minus 3. So in order to make this eliminate, we're going to multiply that by 4. So just making it a little low for ourselves. We're going to eliminate f. So we get minus 12g plus 4f equals 28. 2g minus 4f equals minus 3. The 4f's eliminate. We get minus 10g is equal to 25. So g is equal to minus 2.5. Or if you want to leave it in fractional form, minus 5 over 2. So we want to sub back into now equation 3 to figure out what our f will be. So in 3, we get minus 3 times minus 5 over 2 plus f minus 7 equals 0 and f equals negative 0 0.5 or minus a half when you work that through. So now we'll go back to one of the first two equations. I'll take equation 1 and we have 2 times minus 5 over 2 plus 2 times minus 1 over 2 plus c equals negative 2. So you get minus 5 minus 1 plus c equals negative 2. Minus 6 plus c equals minus 2. c equals minus 2 plus 6, which gives us 4. Therefore, the equation, going back to the general equation, x squared plus y squared plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c equals 0, for us looks like x squared plus y squared um, minus 5x, when you sub that in, minus y, so minus 1y if you want for minus 5, plus 4 equals 0. So example 10, a circle K has center C, which is 4, 2, and it makes a chord of 6 units in length with the Y axis. Find the equation of K. So we have very little information here to go on. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to sketch something out to give us a sense of how it looks and to see how we might proceed with the question. So this is what um, our circle looks like. So we have our y axis here and we can see that it's making a chord. So the first thing we're going to do then when we have this drawn is to think about a theorem. So we do have a theorem which relates to a chord and it says that the radius will perpendicularly bisect the chord. So we're going to put in our radius here from our center point and we actually know that it bisects and more than just bisects, it perpendicularly bisects. So we have a right angle there. Um, so at this point, we're like, okay, we now know, let's put in some of our information. So this point here is for two. I know this is three units and I know this is three units. 
I have a right angle. Um, and so I'm going to go back to my question for a minute. And I say, well, well, if I want the equation, I need two things. So the two things I need for the equation in this circle is the center, which I have, and the length of the radius. Okay. So I need the length of the radius. Um, I do actually know, I'll try to get it in a red color, this length here because I'm coming in from the y-axis on the y-axis x is 0 and I move over here to x being 4 so actually I know that this is 4 units in length so don't forget that when we are talking about either one of the axes or both we can work with the idea that we can count in to figure out how long a line is so now I have two lengths I know this is a right angle, so I'm going to actually draw in the hypotenuse to create a right angle triangle. So what I actually have here is a right angle triangle, which has four units here, three units here, and that's my radius. So if I can use my right angle triangle and Pythagoras, I'll be able to work out the length of the radius. So this is CAB. C has to be the hypotenuse. The other side doesn't matter a squared plus b squared so uh, sorry now that should be or squared or squared equals three squared plus four squared so or works out as the square root of 25 so or is equal to five therefore for the uh, for the equation of the circle i go back to y minus h squared plus oh sorry now go back again x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared where our center for 2 is our hk and our radius equals 5 so we have x minus 4 squared plus y minus 2 squared equals 5 squared so we have x squared minus 8x plus 16 plus y squared minus 4y plus 4 equals 25. And that can be cleaned up. I'm just going to clean it up up here. So we get x squared plus y squared minus 8x minus 4y. So we 20 minus 25, which is minus 5 equals zero and that is the equation of k so actually very straightforward once we've drawn it out and um, all we were doing was pythagoras so just the importance of a diagram i can't stress that enough and really to remember when we're dealing with the x-axis to the y-axis we do have an idea of length um, that may not be obvious so just bear that in mind when you're doing any questions where we're talking about the x to the y-axis the final example in this video, um, it's the equation of two possible circles through two given points, um, which touches one of the axes. So find the equation of two circles, which contain the points 3 minus 2 and 2 minus 1, and which touch the x-axis. So we're going to sketch this out. So 3 minus 2 and 2 minus 1, they're both positive x and negative y. So we're going to talk about this scenario here. Um, so we'll put our points in. So let's say this one is 2 minus 1, and this one here is 3 minus 2. I have my center point here, which is minus g. Am I right? Minus g minus f. And that's pretty much all the information that we have. Um, when it's sketched out like this, what you need to remember when we're dealing with one of the axes being a tangent, we know that this distance here that I just put in in red is my radius. But that also relates to where it is on the y-axis. Now, it'll be a negative or. Remember, or is the length of the radius, so or must be positive. So the three things that I know in this case um. I know that this point 
2 minus 1 is on the circle and this point 3 minus 2 is on the circle. So I'm going to substitute them in and I'm going to work with x squared plus y squared plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c equals 0. So now that we know the points 2 minus 1 definitely sits on this circle, so we're going to sub that in. So you get 2 squared plus minus 1 squared plus 2g times 2 plus 2f minus 1 plus c equals 0. And working that through, we get 4g minus 2f plus c equals negative 5. And that's equation 1. So then the second equation is 3 minus 2. And we get 3 squared plus minus 2 squared plus 2g times 3 plus 2f times minus 2 plus c equals 0. So we get 6g minus 4f plus c equals negative 13 and that's equation 2. So then the third equation comes from this fact of understanding that the distance um, on the y-axis, which is negative r, but we've said in the point is minus f. So actually, we're saying that the radius is equal to f. So that's where our third equation is coming from, r equals f. Now, the formula for the radius on page 19 is the square root of uh, g squared plus f squared minus c is equal to the radius, but in this case we know the radius is f. So we can work that through a little bit just to clean it up. So we're going to square both sides. So we get g squared plus f squared minus c is equal to f squared. The f squared subtract them from both sides and we get g squared equals c and that actually is the third piece of information and now we're going to go and work through and do some simultaneous equations okay so looking at our three equations now we have two linear and one non-linear so we're going to need to work with these in quite a specific way so when we take one and two and um, we want to eliminate the f because three does not have an f so eliminate f. I know it can be tempting to want to eliminate that c, but it's not really going to help us. So 4g minus 2f plus c equals negative 5. Uh, 6g minus 4f plus c equals negative 13. That first one, what we're going to do, we're multiplying that by a negative 2. And then the f's will cancel. So get minus 8g plus 4f minus 2c equals positive 10. The bottom equation 2 does not change. 4f plus c equals negative 13. The f's cancel. We're left with minus 2g minus c equals minus 3. So now what we can do is we can use substitution. So we can sub this. Let's call this equation 4. So we can sub equation 3 into equation 4 to create a, a g, g squared, and, an, and a number, so basically a quadratic equation which we can solve. Okay, so we just said we're going to do 3 into 4. So we sub, um, we would do it the other way around, but basically it'd be a little bit easier. So we're going to have 2g minus g squared, there's my substitution, equals negative 3. Let's clean this up. Minus g squared minus 2g plus 3 equals 0. I'm not liking a negative quadratic, so I'm going to multiply across by minus 1 because 0. Uh, you can use minus b. You can use guide number. I'm going to go straight to just factorization plus 3 minus 1. So our two values, g equals 1 and g equals negative 3. Now bring your, answer, or bring your attention back to the question, and it did ask you for two different circles. So that has given us two values for g, which in turn will give us two values for f and two values for c. So let's go back with our g, and let's work out our c and our f. 
So I'm going to use equation 3 for this because c is equal to g squared. So c is equal to 1. Um, and again, I'll use equation here, 3 here. So it's c is equal to g squared. So c is equal to 9. And then go back to maybe equation 1 for this. So we have 4 times instead of g1 minus 2f plus c equals minus 5. So 4 plus 1 is 5 minus 10. So 2f is equal to negative 10. So f is equal to 5. And do the same thing over here. So go back to equation 1. 4 times g, which is minus 3, minus 2f plus c equals negative 5. So we get minus 12 plus 9. So that's a negative 3. So we're going to add 3 to both sides. So minus 2f is equal to minus 2. So f is equal to 1. So now that we have all of our values, we can go back and work with our general equation of the circle. So going back to the general equation um, of a circle formula and putting our circles very clearly, so the variables for each circle together, we have x squared plus y squared plus 2 times 1 times x, so 2x, plus 2 times 5 times x, 10y, plus 1 equals 0. And then we have x squared plus y squared plus um, uh, 2 times minus 3. So we have minus 6x plus 2 times 1 times y plus 9 equals 0 and they are our two circles.